In A Gift of Fire, Sarah Basse asks, How well do people armed with cell phone cameras distinguish news events and evidence of crimes from voyeurism, their own rudeness, and stalking? Would you believe me if I told you an asteroid hit Australia yesterday causing intense blasts of hot wind and gas while destroying most plant and animal life for 800 miles? What if you didn't hear the story from me but saw it posted on your Twitter feed from a celebrity you follow? Or what if the source was a Facebook group you're part of? What if you read the story on a blog you follow or a podcast you listen to? Or what if the source was none of these, but you saw the story as a side item on your web browser? What if the source was a network television channel or newspaper? Which of these sources would you believe? And how do you decide which sources are credible? Do you ask yourself if the story is true? And if so, why do you believe it's true? And do you consider the story of the asteroid news? Digital media in all its shapes and forms has become a channel for news. How do we assess truth, facts, and news in the digital media world? What do we expect from those who provide us our news? These are questions which can be difficult to answer. Let's identify key terms and questions around news in the digital media world. What is news? Definitions of news vary. Spence and Elliot tell us, news, information counts as news because of a combination of three factors. News is a cluster concept. The more elements from each factor a particular piece includes, the more that particular piece of information counts as news. While some pieces are clearly hard news and some are clearly pure entertainment or advocacy communication, Many examples fall somewhere on the continuum of more news to less news. Opinion pieces, for example, will often contain a few elements from one or more of the three factors of news, but will mostly be an argument designed to lead users to share the opinion of the producer. News, on the other hand, tells people what to think about rather than telling them what they should conclude. The three factors of news in the digital era are 1. Publication intent, 2. Properties of the product, and 3. User perception. Wikipedia uses a simpler definition of news. According to Wikipedia, news is information about current events. This may be provided through many different media. Word of mouth, printing, postal systems, broadcasting, electronic communication, or through the testimony of observers and witnesses to events. For examining digital media ethics, I gravitate to the distinction Spence and Elliott make when they suggest opinion pieces focus on persuading another to share the opinion of the author, while news tells people what to think about. If we accept that premise, we can attempt to separate and test information considered true and help us make a reasonable assessment about the information. We might assume opinion pieces, while they may contain facts, may not present a reasonable set of facts and balanced sides to a story. Information in the presentation of information defined as news isn't as simple as this one distinction. We need to include other factors in our evaluation, including the source of the news and the information itself. Who is the author of the news? What are their credentials for providing news? How are they supported financially, and what are their motives for providing the news? Do they follow any ethical standards in their reporting of the news? And the information, is it true? Are we dealing with facts or values? A new term being floated over the last few years is fake news. What is fake news? We might consider fake news as news comprising misinformation or disinformation designed to mislead or look like genuine news. And what are misinformation and disinformation? Elliot and Spence tell us what is necessary for both information and knowledge is truth. Information without truth is not strictly seeking information, 
but either misinformation, the unintentional dissemination of well-formed and meaningful false data, or disinformation, the intentional dissemination of false information. Can we limit our assessments of news to only the producer and the facts? Perhaps not. I suggest we need to include a couple other pieces in our examination, ourselves and others. If we are looking at the news from an ethical perspective, we'll want to consider the ethical perspectives involved with the news story along with the stakeholders and ask, what are the consequences of the news and the digital media involved? Let's go back to my hypothetical asteroid example. How might we approach the news story and the ethical implications? One approach I might take with this story is to consider the source of the news. Did I see this same story from multiple sources and do the facts presented appear to be true? How credible are the sources? With this example, I would think it would be relatively easy to find multiple sources reporting a recent asteroid story. If I couldn't find at least a couple credible news outlets reporting this story, I might question its validity. If there are disparate facts presented from multiple news outlets, I might try to assess each source and put more weight on the facts presented by the source I trust the most, or the source I believe is likely to present the most accurate facts. For example, a Facebook posting may have the same story as the National Science Foundation, NSF, but the facts presented vary in that the NSF reported damage for 800 miles, but the Facebook posting shows the asteroid damaged all of Australia. If this was the report, I might trust the NSF number over Facebook's because of my experience and knowledge of these two drastically different organizations and their purpose, reason, and motives for sharing the story. In assessing the ethical issues for this news story, I'll also want to consider the stakeholders and consequences. I would venture the primary stakeholders would include residents of Australia. The consequences of the event might most affect them. Consider friends, family, and loved ones of the Australians around the globe as stakeholders too. If people died from the asteroid hit, the actual radius of the impact damage becomes an important fact. Might the asteroid hit raise environmental and climate concerns? If so, the number of stakeholders rises. Getting the facts correct is something that varies from news source to news source and their professional, journalistic, and ethical approaches to news. And depending on the ethical perspective or perspectives we are approaching, this story from, our actions after the story will vary. Do we take action such as a donation to a relief fund or do further research on asteroids or climate? Do we share the stories with others or do we do nothing? What is our personal responsibility to news? Is consuming and evaluating news a civic duty? These days, news reporting is immediate and in multiple forms, with various perspectives and motives. We might need to do more work or dig deeper before we come to any conclusions or take immediate actions after consuming our news.